What is going on YouTube? June here, and I'm back again with another Idols Heroes video. Today we're gonna be taking a look at my Server 48 account, the VIP 8 account. We're pushing it in Sea Land, trying to get that Sea Land 23, and I'll showcase how we went about doing it. Just at the top here, I would not suggest doing this to people, uh, doing this as like your first go-to Sea Land. Really, really tough. As you will see through this footage, it ain't easy, man. I wouldn't suggest this. I'm using three fillers, uh, a Sherlock, a V4 Sword Flash, and a Fiona. Both of them, I believe, are Void 1. I have a Splendid Receptor on the Sherlock. I'm using Antlers throughout pretty much the whole run. I don't think I use the A and B that I have. I have, I have Splendid Artifacts, so I have Splendid Antlers, Splendid Receptor, and Splendid A and B. I don't think I use the A and B um, on the Sword Flash, but I do put it on the Sherlock. Shout out to Smooth for letting me know my guildy. He's like, I put A and B on Sherlock and it was GG. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. And uh, yeah, that made it really easy on one of the waves. But generally speaking, this is not a seal end you really want to focus on. You want to do Abyss. If you have a queen, you're in luck. Queen is the cheaper and easier route to get seal end progress. But this was the first night that seal end went live. And I really wanted to get some progress just to see how much I could push uh, this uh, this hero through through this PvE and it was brutal. I spent 10,000 gems to get the Sea Land 23. Again, that's why I really don't want to recommend this. But if Sword Flash is your first E5, I mean, you're not really gonna have a choice, right? And you're still probably building up. Sorry, not your first E5. Your first transcending hero. You're probably still building up a lot of your uh, a lot of your account, right? So you're not gonna have access to a bunch of stuff. So it's possible that this will be useful for some people. And if you are trying to make progress, you know, just for free every single day, you can certainly consider this. The problem with this seal and why it's so difficult is the CC that the enemies have. If you don't have something like a Sherlock to slow down the enemies, you just have no chance. There's also not the best synergy between Sword Flash and the dubbing system because the doves are only as good until you hit the targets multiple times. Sword Flash actually hits the targets multiple times. So in situations like this, you can see that it's like amazing, right? It works. It's like, great. Uh, everything got dubbed. We just started assassinating things one by one, but getting to that point is very hard. These nodes in particular, these like first nodes of every single sea land are absolutely terrible. Like, look at that. Like there's death triggers for Horrify. There's freeze as well. There's double CC and the enemy goes before you which means they're going to just destroy you. Your, your Sword Flash is going to be sitting there horrified in round one before even being able to do a basic because well, Horrified just completely cancels your ability to do a basic, right? So really, really tough. Here, I'm making an adjustment. I'm like, I need more HP. I need more stats. I really didn't want to upgrade anything, um, but I'm kind of forced here because I'm trying to make progress. So I have, to, I have to start upgrading the home for Sword Flash to get more stats out of the Fiona. I got to tap into some of these resources. Uh, I even upgraded, I think, the Sherlock to five levels just to see if that would help. But again, if you take a look there, look at that. My Sword Flash is doing nothing. It's so hard. When you're running these weak heroes that die instantly, every single time I think a hero dies, you have a chance to get horrified. And I think the chance to get horrified is very, very high. So these, uh, I want to say they're mages, maybe? Whatever. These ranged heroes, mages, priests, they're obnoxious. So then I get the idea to actually pivot and adjust. I lose the aura, right? So I go down to three heroes, which means I don't have the aura in the bottom left. And that means we'd have a lot of HP and attack that we're missing. I think even control immunity. I don't even know what the stats are for having five fortress heroes, but I just figure I'm just gonna smash through this. It's just, it's too much. <laughs> so I smashed through that one. Uh, and then for the rest of the, the rest of the progress, I have all the footage, but that one, I was just like, I was not feeling fighting through that RNG or watching that RNG. And so I was just gonna use a smash function to get through that. But again, when a hero dies, your sword flash gets cc'd and after that you're kind of screwed like you she's just st sitting there and she can't do anything right so it's a really really tough seal and the enemies are pretty vicious and even the sword flash is the strongest hero in the game uh the supports have to be there kind of to you know not die essentially is their primary role and sherlock is amazing because he has the ability to dub so if anything um fortress seal and is highly dependent on your ability to dove the enemies so how good is your receptor do you have a, a mage star spawn i did this with a level 101 mage star spawn as well as i think i'll show it later the whale pet i think is at like 120 or 130 at this point uh, this was a couple days ago so again it's very very tough to get progress here 
Uh, here, the adjustment I'm making is I look into the resonance gear. I only have the weapon resonated because uh, she's primarily the reason I built her was for vortex pushes, where you're not using the other sets of, of the resonance gear. So here I go, I need to tap into more resources, right? This is all about tinkering and making your team stronger. Uh, and my team needs to get stronger. Or my sword flash, I felt need to get stronger. So I go look for those resonance sets. So I give her way more HP uh, and true DR. Or sorry, no, uh, all damage reduction, not true DR. It would be sick if you get. Or true dr but so and here uh, i'm not too, we're going for the a and b here uh, i think i talked to smooth at this point and he was like i put a and b and it was relatively easy so i make those adjustments go back into c line try to get the c line 22 boss done and again uh it, it's once you get your team strong enough maybe you have another like you have more void put into your your sherlock or whatever it might be a lot easier I just didn't want to move Void Enables around because I knew I was going to be pushing Void Vortex as well. So I didn't want to like go full send Void 4 on my Sherlock. I was just seeing that people were able to do 21 and 22. That's what I'd heard the first day. So and some people had gotten 23. So I was really kind of determined to get 23 on the first night. <clears throat> so I kind of want to redline the account. At the same time, we could showcase uh, how strong uh, for Fortress or doing Sealand Fortress with a uh, oh my god. At the same time, just trying to showcase a little bit what Sword Flash can do because a lot of people are going to have her as the first or second transcending hero. So there we see that able to do it. But another thing worth mentioning in this game mode is they take your energy away, much like in Defire 2, Defire 1. So I don't know who's doing it. I don't know what enemy's doing it, but it's brutal. It, it is not fun. Having your energy taken away can be just crippling, right? So. Here, I'm trying to get more stats again, trying to make more adjustments. Um, I We get some from clearing, I guess we got some wood from clearing the previous seal land, the boss. So I reinvest that into slot 1 to try to get anything, anything going, because we're just dying. <laughs> we're just constantly dying. And I'm just looking for more HP, honestly. More HP, more attack, more raw stats. And luckily, Cloud Island expansion allows us to tap into more of those kind of stats. So it did help out. Uh, Again, you see that it's more the strength of the Sherlock that's going to carry us through a lot of these clears. You, your Sherlock needs to be like in sync with your Sword Flash, right? Dubbing targets she's not attacking, and then re-dubbing targets that she does attack. So 23-1, the node we just faced, that's going to be one of your toughest. Uh, if, you, if you are going to try to push into, for, uh, into Fortress, those first nodes are a nightmare, right? But once you get past those nodes, they're relatively easy because there isn't as much CC. There, that stupid horrify isn't happening, right? You're just facing these dumb warriors and they're not that tough. And then the next node will be two and two, right? So we're facing two of the ranged heroes and two warriors. Not as bad. We got Sherlock just high rolling here like crazy, just dubbing everything. And we just got perfect synergy, right? Sherlock is not bothering with the hero that Sword Flash is trying to kill. And then Sherlock pretty much can redove targets that, that break CC. And uh, yeah, these a lot of these clears though, if you notice, they're really close. Like we're getting these kills in round 15. Again, there isn't much space. There isn't much wiggle room. You're really getting just barely by these levels. Here, I spent probably the longest amount of time. If you guys notice, I've already adjusted my team. Um, I didn't include that in the footage here, but the adjustment is making two Sierras and a nine star bleaker. So here we're going to be doing something a little different. I recognize that I need even more HP. Like, I need to be tankier than I already am. So I ended up adding control immunity to avoid that stupid horrify. And I had DR and block, making her really tanky, but keeping the antlers and the crit stone that I have on her and just hoping that she gets tankier. And here I'm just, I'm recognizing that that's, this is working, right? Giving her tankier enables is helping us stay alive longer. And I just hope that I'm able to scale damage with the antlers within 15 rounds to kill everybody in time, right? But look how tanky she is, right? She has gotten tankier. She's not instantly getting destroyed. So we have the crit stone, we have the antlers, and then, right, there's, there's only one other way to do it. And that's to make, to give her the super tank enables. We need to give her <laughs> Literally one two four one two on the enables and see if this gives her the tankiness she needs. I get the death trigger there from the bleaker. Uh, there's some ice triggers I think happening either from the Sherlock reflecting the enemy's ice or 
from uh, the Sierra dying, right? Sierra has a death trigger where if she dies, she can freeze the enemy. So I'm just trying to tap into everything possible in the Fortress faction, trying to use all the enabling systems to the best of my ability, and just try to create this one super duper high roll event where I'm getting doves, I'm getting death triggers, uh, my Fiona is not waking up enemies, the Sherlock is taking care of targets perfectly, and this is the run where all that stuff lines up. She just starts scaling. We got Sherlock surviving long enough with his swaps. Everyone's birded. We get a Phoenix buff into an active, and that is the clear for CLN 23 featuring Sword Flash. Again, I would not recommend this. This is a really, really tough thing to recreate, right? We're running <laughs> two six star Sierras and a nine star Bleaker for death triggers, and just three, like, you know, heroes that are, that are enabled, of course, but. The Fifi probably isn't that necessarily necessary. Maybe you could use like another Sierra or Bleaker, but so again, don't recommend this, but it is a good showcase of what Sword Flash can do if you absolutely redline her to the max and you're really just trying to find progress any anyway, which way you can. And you just really want to get those smash points at 23. If you're really searching for those type of things, you know, and you're in a rush to get CLN progress done, I would actually recommend going for Abyss if you have the Queen, but not everyone's going to have the Queen. And if you have Sword Flash and she's your only transcendent hero, hopefully this will help you out or give you at least a little bit of insight of how tough it can be. I'm rocking, again, a splendid, splendid artifacts across the board on all the heroes that do matter. And I had the ability to pivot into an AMB. I think that was really important to put that on the Sherlock for that one node on, I think, 23-1, giving him that tank ability so it doesn't die as fast so you can keep dubbing stuff and you just have to hope to get lucky with the sherlock dubs right um fiona is like pretty much whatever i don't i don't think it's matters too much if anything she she can make runs relatively worse because she can wake up targets that get dubbed but you just hope that she takes a couple hits and then she dies i guess and then doesn't horrify your team <laughs> but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this one um and it was informational. Maybe you'll avoid doing it. Maybe you'll pursue it further. But at the end of the day, I think Seal and Abyss is the one to pursue. Thank you so much for checking out the video. If you do enjoy this content, leave me a like, comment, subscribe. We're still growing the channel. So I do appreciate all the support. Until next time, peace.